Coming up on Out and About Art, you're getting a recap of Polk State College's most recent theater production, an art exhibit centered on a great cause and a gallery inspired by the American dream. It's all coming up, so stay tuned. Hello and welcome to Out and About Art. I'm your host, Dion Spires. Polk State College always has a strong presence in our community and last month was no exception as they took a stand for a great cause to make a difference in people's lives. The Winter Haven campus hosted its One Billion Rising art exhibit for its second year. The exhibit ran through the month of February, a time when many local organizations come together to raise awareness for domestic violence against women. It was a powerful exhibit featuring all types of media from paintings to sculptures, mixed media, and video. Take a look at some of the art in the exhibit and what some of those involved had to say about it. The exhibit you're looking at is One Billion Rising, a national juried exhibition. And One Billion Rising is a international movement uh, that brings awareness to domestic violence and rape crisis uh, in the world. And it's essentially uh, a movement that came out of the fact that one out of every three women experience some sort of domestic violence or violence in their lifetime. And that equals out to about a billion uh, women um, over the course of history. Uh, and at this point, it's probably much larger than that. So this movement is happening all over the world right now and in forms of dance, art, uh, poetry, uh, public demonstrations, sit-ins, all these different things that are going on around the world. It's all happening during the month of February, but specifically around Valentine's Day. So this exhibition was organized the month of February to show artworks about anti-violence, about women's issues, about gender issues, about experiences, struggles of violence and overcoming and having victory and hope in these uh, dire situations. I moved to uh, Polk County three years ago and we have these amazing gallery spaces at Polk State College. I really wanted to expose students to artwork that was social, that had a bigger purpose, had a bigger meaning, show uh, students that they can use their artwork to change the world. And so this particular movement uh, drew my interest and I wanted to join in on this. So the way I did it was organizing an art show in 2014. 2014 was the first One Billion Rising National Juried Exhibition and now this is our second. We're going to do it every two years, so it's a biennial. The artwork you're looking at came from all over the United States and from local artists. It's about a half and half mix. Um, there was a call for art put out over national uh, art searches. So there's databases all over the, the internet that call artists to these different exhibitions and shows. So I put a national call out so anyone could enter, a student, a emerging artist, or an established artist, anyone could enter. So it was more artists who really had a affinity for this topic. Uh, so we have artworks coming from males and females, from uh, New York to North Carolina. They're coming from everywhere. So all of these artists submitted. We had over 100 submissions, and only 30 were accepted. Well, this is a piece that um, it kind of made itself. I was, uh, I had heard a, a story from a friend of mine who had had a really bad experience and it just compelled me to do something. It represents to me a woman's story of all the different things that a woman can do and be. And I, I also, uh, Lat, uh, laced it together so that it could be, no matter what happens, you're still hanging together. <laughs> The concept of my artwork is a woman who's 
she's trying to rebuild herself, but she's kind of stuck, like in a void. So she still has some of the effects from when she was abused, and she's trying to work her way to rebuilding herself as a new person. I think it's a very strong show. Um, each piece tells a different story, and a lot of the stories are very personal. You know, for someone to share their thoughts and to, to open up and put something out there that we can read into it or read out of it is, you know, a, a thing that every artist hopes to be able to do. I. Um, was involved the last time they did the show, I entered a piece, and just being a local artist, it's something that is kind of near and dear to my heart, and it's another way to support the Women's Resource Center, and it's a way to make a statement with a piece of art. The thing that got me was the number, to try to put that number on something without just writing the number, to show the number, was what inspired the piece because it's a lot of numbers, it's a lot of marks. And when this unfolds, it's actually four foot by 15 foot long. And so that's a lot of hash marks, about two days worth of work. This is a very moving and very powerful exhibit. Um, it was the first year as well. Uh, you can see that people really have put some thought into these pieces that they've, that they've created. And they really um, make you think about the violence and how can we put it into it and what, what people go through when they have violence um, perpetrated upon them. No matter where you live, a small community, small area, uh, there's still these problems. There's still domestic violence, and uh, it doesn't matter where you live. So there's a lot of reasons for us to be concerned about it and for us to raise our voices against it. I think it helps people become more aware, and then you can learn more about how you could help others in situations or what you can do to be part of the community to help. I've been an instructor here for three years. I've noticed that there are a lot of struggling students in unfortunate circumstances at home, in relationships, and there's been a lot of women that I've come in contact with that needed assistance and that needed help. And a lot of these are artists, creative individuals who really just need some sense of hope and some sense of having a place to go to, having a, a resource, being able to contact someone. So as I've been here for a little while and, and my own personal motivations, I really found that this was a good way to encourage those female artists who I'm around, those students who are in need. Um, that's one motivation for creating this exhibition and there are many more. We had a large number of people come out to support this show and I'm so grateful. We raised money for a, stu a student in need uh, who's in a, in a bad situation and we also raised money for the Women's Resource Center, the Peace River Center, and as the show continues, any artwork that sells, a large percentage of that goes to those two organizations split between them so that we can help women in Polk County. In addition to the exhibit, One Billion Rising hosted multiple flash mob dances across Polk County, as well as other events, all to raise awareness for the cause. Polk Museum of Art is hosting another exhibit, this one featuring a photographer and artist with some pretty big names on his resume. In an exhibit built on the American dream, you may even see some famous faces that you'll recognize. Here's a look at some of Russell Young's work and what you can expect when you're visiting the museum.
so this is, is essentially a, a working retrospective. So if you hear an artist having a retrospective, usually it's a show that encompasses their entire lifetime as an artist because they've usually passed by the time the retrospective happens. So this is a working retrospective. So this is a retrospective of, a, of an artist who is still in the midst of working and still creating work and making new work, um, even unrelated to what's in the exhibition. But all of these pieces were created after 2010. As an artist, I got very, very sick in 2010. I had the swine flu. I was in a coma for eight days. Um, was not expected to come out of the coma. And it essentially left him paralyzed. So he had to learn to, to read again, write again, walk again. Uh, he had a respirator for breathing. And so all of these works, even though they might hark back to some of his earlier series, these were all produced after that um, really tragic time in his life in 2010. And so it's, it's almost, it's a working retrospective, yes, but it's almost kind of a celebration of him overcoming that illness and transcending that illness and then creating works that um, are just as beautiful and just as important as those works that he created before that. I grew up in Northern England and there is a it was a very brutal childhood full of violence and fights every day and really very little education at school. We were just meant to work in a factory. It was grey, it was dark, it rained every day. Um, you know, it was very heavy and oppressive and um, I felt like I was suffocating. But even from the age of like, probably eight, I can remember my dad, we'd watch Magnificent Seven or we'd watch Marilyn Monroe or James Dean or Marlon Brando in movies. And so I just, I just fell in love with America. I fell in love with the American dream and all the idealism of America. As an artist, I, I really came out of photography first. I was a, a photographer for 15 years and directed 100 music videos and worked with Springsteen and Dylan and I shot the George Michael Faith album sleeve. Um, I then decided to become an artist, the thing I'd wanted to do since I was about three years old. My aunt bought me at Christmas these huge sheets of paper and a set of wonderful graphite pencils. And apparently this one Christmas, I sat for hours just scribbling away on the floor, just making marks. I was just like, oh, I enjoy this. And everybody praised me. And I'm like, as a kid, you're like, you, you, you know, we, want, we all want praise. We want to be loved. And it's, it, you know, I thought, well, that's easy. I enjoy this. Wow, I want to do this. I started off trying sort of explore abstracts, but then it led into um, this series called Pig Portraits, mugshots of famous people. And so you have these traditionally invincible celebrities suddenly looking very vulnerable, uh, looking like felons. And so he's really, that was, that was really the perfect embodiment of this idea that he's been working with for years and years and years about fame and shame. And, you know, we've had some people, and, and this, is, this is understandable, that they equate his work to Andy Warhol's work. You know, Andy Warhol worked in a lot of screen prints. He worked with a lot of um, recognizable identities of celebrities, including Marilyn Monroe. In fact, Russell uses one of the same images that Andy Warhol used in the 1960s. Um, but what you have to understand is that Russell was actually doing the exact opposite of what Andy Warhol was doing. Uh, Warhol was, um, as I like to say, he was elevating the mundane. Uh, he was all about superficiality and commodity and American sensationalism. And actually that is all those things that Russell fell out of love with when he became part of the entertainment industry as a photographer and a music video director. So he's, he's kind of asking us to ask ourselves, you know, why do we frame this idea of American sensationalism as a positive thing? Um, he often describes it as fame and shame. So he's looking at the fame, but also he's looking at maybe the, some of the consequences of that fame in terms of the shame. about Russell's work through L Rhonda Long Sharp, who owns Modern Masters Gallery in Indianapolis. And, and the museum recently took a trip to Indianapolis about three years ago. 
and just coincidentally met Rhonda. Um, we saw Russell's work and we worked with Rhonda to acquire one of Russell's pieces for the permanent collection here in 2013. Uh, she put me in touch with Russell and with Jonathan Farrow, who's Russell's uh, rep here in the States. And we started this idea, we started this conversation about having an exhibition because Russell had never had an exhibition in the United States before. So we, we had this conversation at Art Basel in Miami a couple years ago. And then we also worked with Robin Barton, who is a close friend of Russell's, who owns Bank Robber Gallery in London. And so with Robin's help, kind of the four of us put our heads together and decided what might be good for the space and also what would be available uh, that Russell would have that we could use for the show. I, I sort of gave them free reign to really, um, you know, to do whatever they wanted. I, I am so incredibly impressed by everybody. I mean, absolutely everybody at the museum, um, the space, the lighting, how kind, how considerate everybody is, the way they've hung the exhibition, the way they've allowed all this space on the walls for the um, paintings to breathe. I, I could not be happier. I mean, I'm ecstatic. Oh, we've had an overwhelmingly positive response. And, uh, you know, I think Russell's work, no matter where you go, is, is going to elicit that kind of response. It's just really beautiful work visually. Uh, but also when you start learning what Russell's doing and what his intention is with the work, then it really becomes very interesting in terms of the context of the work. There was a group of students that came yesterday and I think they just thought they'd have an artist show them around and talk about his work. But I, I mean, I said to them, you know, I told them at all, you know, in the end of the day, you can do this. I said, throw away your phones and your computers, engage with each other, put the hard work in. I mean, in the end of the day, it's hard, 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 hard work. And hopefully, one of them is inspired and will keep coming back to this museum and will, you know, become a, a working artist within this community. You know, I think human beings are the only thing on this planet that actually do music and art. I mean, you know, birds build things, they make things, they use tools, you know, birds will use tools to break open, you know, nuts and things like that, but they don't, you know, they don't do they don't sing songs just purely for the sake of singing songs and, and loving songs and having that pleasure. So, you know, if you're not involved in the arts, then you're not a full human being, as far as I'm concerned. The Forever Young exhibit continues to run through the end of the month. You have until March 27th to check it out, so be sure to make it out soon. While you're at the museum, take a look at their other exhibits that currently feature Latin American art, contemporary art, and art exploring the concept of space. Don't forget that the admission to the museum is currently free, so it's the perfect excuse to get out on the town. Continuing the theme of strong messages from earlier in the show, Polk State College's theater department recently presented its production of A Doll's House, a show that focuses on a woman's struggle to find herself and overcome obstacles. It's their second to last production of the school year, and I got the chance to speak with a few of the actors involved. Take a look. This show is about a woman, and back in the time, obviously, women were not held as high of a standard as men, and a lot of it is just about this woman, Nora's journey throughout kind of discovering that she doesn't know who she is and she doesn't know what she wants and her husband years earlier gets really really sick and she has to do something in order to save his life where she ends up committing a crime and all of those actions kind of lead up to one big moment that she discovers she doesn't know who she is and she has to go discover who she is. Throughout the play you see her you see her really struggling to try to to cover up something that went wrong that she did, but eventually she realizes that there's no point. Like she's been trying, she's been trying all this time covering up these secrets. When at the end of the day, she doesn't even love the person she's with anymore. So she leaves, and it was really um, it was a big deal back then because this was the first the first time that a woman left her husband and her children. So it's really, really important, and it was a really big movement for women. A, a woman is just as much of a man as, uh, as a man is, and he, she can do whatever she likes. She can 
the world is her oyster just like it should be for a man. It's really empowering for, for women. And she has a line in it that says, uh, uh, I'm, just as much, I'm just as much of a human as you are. And I think that, that, that's the, probably the line that really hits me. It's just, we're all, we're all human. You've always been such a mystery to me, Nora. I, I've never known whether you, like, torn bald or me. Yes, yes. Don't you understand that there are people that you love most, but there are other people you almost prefer being with? People don't realize how hard it is to uh, go from just here to here and to, to not try to bring uh, or to bring parts of yourself into a character to make it you or to make something not you. Um, it's just, it's art just as much as any other bit of art is. I wasn't prepared, I don't think. I thought it would be easier than what it was, um, but it's a really big transition between how she is in the beginning and how she is in the end and showing that transition has been probably the most difficult part. Building this character, these t all of these characters being built to be these loved characters and at the end for them to be ripped apart, it's, it kind of changes things. So um, it's it really has been getting the emotion in the show itself. The more you plead for him, the more impossible it becomes for me to keep him on. People at the bank already know I've dismissed Crossdad. Suppose rumors were to get around that the new manager's mind could be changed so swiftly by his wife. What if they did? Oh, of course that's nothing as long as a certain stubborn little lady can get her way. Hmm? What were you smiling at? No, you were like... No, Dr. Mink, you were smiling! <laughs> oh, I see you become more cunning than I thought. No, I feel rather mad today. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> Dr. Mink, you're not to die on these poor balls and things. This is a black box, so it's very, very up close and personal. Black box is very interesting. It's like, um, it's like there's the, the four walls, but the fourth wall is a glass, is a glass pane, and that's where everybody is on, on the other side, just looking into a house. Working with it is difficult because they're so close, and you can hear absolutely everything anybody says. Anybody who drops anything or opens a bag of chips, you can hear it. Um, and I think the audience struggles sometimes because they are so close, they feel like they can't laugh or they can't make comments or anything like that, but it's a really, really good setting. It's different from what you normally see. Uh, I'll hear gasps and people going, oh no, just because, you know, it's it, really, it's because it's exhilarating to see a woman stand up for herself, especially in 2016 where it's become so much of an issue, you know, with, with everything that's been going on in the world. So I think this is exactly, this show that we're doing is exactly what needs to be done at this time. what? I mean the whole thing. Yesterday, you were talking about a rich admirer who's going to have some money for you. Yes, that money doesn't exist. Worst luck? What about it? Is Dr. Ray Roloff? Yes, he is. And he's no dependent. No, why? And he comes here every day. Yes, I told you. He seems to have more stamina than time. I don't know what you're talking don't about. Don't pretend with me, Nora. Do you think I can't guess what the 4,800 <laughs> Polk State has, has done a lot for me. They give us a lot of options. You can try a lot of things. You can do technical. You can learn how to build sets. You can act if you want. Um, everybody is really, really nice. It's felt, I've gotten a lot of friends and friendships out of it, which I really appreciate. Um, they do a lot of things together as a group, which is great. Um, we go see shows together and they offer a lot of different things like there's musicals and there's classics and there's modern and there's comedies so there's i think there's something for everyone in it paul carbonell who's the theater director for polk state he gave me a scholarship he's actually the one who encouraged me to even go to college and um, with that scholarship i've been able to you know make it through college without really having to worry about financially or anything like that um, and it's just ugh, the amount of training i've received here is outstanding and if I could go back and do my first show with what I know now I would I would do anything to be able to do that and do it right you know my dear I forgive your anxiety even though I do find it intensely insulting it's insulting to think that I should be afraid of the vindictive ravings of some pathetic hat but I do forgive you because I find your worry very attractive and it only proves to me how much you love me 
just as it should be. This would be my third show with, with Paul, and uh, he's, I'm not going to lie, he's, he's, a, he's, he's a tough man, he's a tough man to work with, but, but I love working with him because he is so passionate about it and he knows what he wants, and at the end of the day he's a teacher, he's our teacher, so he'll, you know, he'll, he wants us to get there on our own and he'll push us to that. He really ingrained in us how important this show is to society and historically, and he really helped me develop the transition from the beginning where it's happy and positive and everything is good to the end and he helped us, he helped me understand that the ending isn't negative and that it's not a tragedy and that she is going to find herself and she can go and be a person now and so can her husband. Everybody can say like working with Paul's hard, working with Paul's really hard, but at the end of the day everybody who's ever worked with Paul can say I have learned a lot from that man which I, I'm one of those people. I love the arts. I love cinematography, photography, just painting, all that. I love everything, every aspect of it. And it really it gives, as cliche as it is, it gives that outlet. It lets kids express themselves. Art makes you discover certain things about yourself that you didn't know before. And art makes you think critically. And that's really, really important for everyone to go see art exhibits and to see plays and things like that because it helps you discover parts of your brain that aren't activated all the time. I think art is just fantastic and I would really hate for it to disappear. If you missed a doll's house, you still have one more chance to catch Polk State College in action before they're out for the summer. They're presenting their production of William Shakespeare's Twelfth Night next month, opening on April 7th for a two-week run. For more information, visit their website at www.polk.edu slash theater. That's all I have in store for this month, but thank you for joining me once again. Stay tuned for a list of upcoming art events in Polk County, and be sure to tune in next month for more art out on the belt.